Um, our guest today is Ron Hall. He is, uh, I met him through also from the Google um, Earth Outreach uh, Training Network, and he's going to give you a five minute overview of um, what he's doing with GIS. Ron, they're all yours. Okay. First of all, Patricia, I'm starting my handy timer, so I'll keep my fine my minutes up. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping you press the record button so we can get this for the Outreach yes. Trainers Network. Definitely. Uh, Patricia shared with me that the topic today was going to be cartographic modeling and regression analysis. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about maps as communication tools. Um, and what that means to me in today's web-driven world is something that's become known as what I call WebGIS. And I'll see if I can pull a thread for, through it for you. Regression analysis uh, for me is a statistical technique and it's used for estimating relationships among variables, things that are subject to change, and widely used for prediction and forecasting. Uh, Patricia will probably show you a classic illustration, but it's a graph, an X and a Y axis, and a bunch of points that are on it, vector points. You can put any kind of um, vector information on it. But to put it in the context of cartographic modeling, just take the graph piece, the x and y axis, out of the background and substitute a map. And that's a layman's description of it for me. Um, this concept of using a map for more than directions is an idea that traces itself back a ways to something known as information theory, developed by people like Claude Shannon, World War II-ish. But it underlies telephone and web communication, and most of you probably know that already. But there's an individual that was a compatriot of, of uh, Shannon's named Arthur Robinson, and he came up with this approach about viewing a map as a process of transmitting geographic information from the cartographer via the map to the end user. And in this type of web world that we're working in now and putting aside the issues of data accuracy in the computer age using maps to analyze data has little to do with the data itself but more to do with understanding what the data is about your perspective or any map users perspective on the data and your own creativity and the software you're working with RTX software will give you some amazing analytic capabilities and you probably already started using some of that stuff well, what are you going to do with your analysis after it's done? And what I would propose today is that I encourage you to share it on the web and think about that goal when you're doing your analysis and map creation. And my inspiration for that was Al Gore. I'd seen him speak, and it wasn't all that exciting, but when I saw Inconvenient Truth with him packaged up with the technology and in a movie, it started a debate that's still raging in the world today. So I encourage you to think of your web and your map GIS content as a framework for a discussion when you're doing your analysis and consider all the tools available to you on the web. Uh, push your conception of GIS beyond data management or data mapping and data analysis. Think of it as creating a geographic framework you know, that focuses on communication of ideas, but it's based in spatial reasoning. Uh, try and visualize it like you're constructing a social sandbox where there's alternatives and perspectives that are constructed and then they're discussed and possibly, not like in Washington DC, just possibly a common understanding is distilled. Now Patricia can share quite a number of examples with you and I actually sent her down a couple links uh, with some articles about work I'm doing up here in Spokane. And I'm looking at the big timer over here, and I see I got about a minute left. And so if she shares those samples with you, there's two points I'd like to make in that minute. And one is the cost of GIS software. You're going to cut the umbilical cord to it when you leave the university, and I encourage you that you use free Google products because you can integrate them with other tools, and with them uh, you can use, use them for content creation, collaboration, and promotion. And the last piece I want to talk about is what's going on right now. And that's the workplace of the future, or the learning environment of the future, and it's the web. And I encourage you to get familiar with all these Google products and things like what I'm and uh, Patricia are using today, because you're going to be using this stuff in the workplace. 
So I think I got about 18 seconds left for <laughs> Patricia. So did I do it? Yeah. <laughs> You were awesome. I wish everybody was like you. <laughs> uh, do you have any questions for Ron? He, he has done amazing uh, projects like using SketchUp and putting all of his information for different schools and projects um, in Google Earth and three-dimensional tours. Um, do you have any questions for him? What are like one or two uh, open source or like free web-based tools that you think are really like, cool for visualization? Could you repeat that quickly, Patricia? Yeah. The question. Yeah, she's, she's asking like, what are the two main open source uh, web tools that you recommend for um, visualization of geographic information? Uh, SketchUp and Google Earth. They integrate together, and you can share them across a wide variety of platforms. And then the other reason for using Google Earth is that all your content creation that you do can be done on a wide variety of tools that help you create, maintain the content both collaboratively and edit it as you go. And SketchUp in particular for 3D visualization because it goes into Google Earth and it also integrates into if anybody is going to be interested in engineering um, Rivet. Uh, AutoCAD. I work with that a lot, and SketchUp's designed specifically to go into it because both those tools are lightweight tools, and you can use them on the web. AutoCAD files and Esri files are way too heavy. Heavy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any other questions? All right. Well, Ron, thank you so much. Okay. You guys have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I'll share. He sent me two links that I'll share with you today. Thank you, Ron. Take care. Bye. <laughs> All right, so switching gears, um, one thing also about regression.